welcome back welcome back everyone starting a new series this is going to be btech level 3 it not engineering this is going to be unit 19 or sometimes also unit 18 and it's called the internet of things let's give you some course information so this is going to be 60 guided learning hours so this is half a unit so unit 1 units 2 and units 3 i believe are the bigger units this is only half of that when it comes to guided learning hours. This is coursework only, so you do not have to do any exam. It comes in three parts, normally parts A, B, and C. Assignment A, you have to examine systems and services that form part of the Internet of Things. In short, research. This is just research, nothing else but research. You're going to have to answer loads of questions, trying to understand everything about what makes up internet of things assignment b develop a design for an internet of things system or device to solve a problem now we do get the problem that we have to solve so it's not some it's not a case where you have to go and find your own problem and assignment c carry out the prototyping of an integrated internet of things system or device to solve a problem Again, we have research for assignment A. Assignment B is going to be more or less design. You have to also come up with your project management systems and all of that stuff. That's going to be assignment B. And assignment C is where you actually do the thing. This is where you're going to actually build what you actually wanted to build. Again, I said this before, research, design, and develop. Nothing new there. Course information. Again, I will be using the specification. Now, this is a document given to us by BTEC, by Pearsons themselves. And this gives us every single piece of information that we would that we could potentially cover. It goes way beyond what everyone needs to know, but it's a good place to get all the information you need. You really and truly don't even need the internet until you've looked at the specification because what the specification will do, it will give you every single item that you can speak about, every single thing that you have to research. And it's only when you have these things, then you can go and use the internet to find your information that you want. I'm gonna be using assignment briefs as well. They should be provided to you by your teacher. To be fair, both of them should be provided, the spec and the assignment brief. I will be uploading this at some point, maybe on my Google Drive and sharing it with you guys, but you can go to the link in the description and download this. At the, I'm, I might call it something like Pearson's Resources. And the assignment brief, this is what the client is going to give you. And it's normally along the case of you're a part of a small engineering company that wants to do this thing. And they want you to do some research for assignment A. Let's go back. You're going to have to design for assignment B and then you're going to actually have to develop a prototype for assignment C. Now, keep in mind this word prototype here doesn't mean that you have to have a perfectly working system that looks amazing, that does everything. A prototype is supposed to be like a real world working example of what you intend the system to do. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then finally, I'm going to obviously be using the internet quite extensively as well. I'm going to do what I normally do, which is to give you guys um, my search criteria that I've used to type into Google so you can type it in as well. I'm going to have my Word document where I go through individual sections that you need to work through. The specification and the assignment brief. And as I mentioned, this will have everything you need. I won't cover this again. Course information, grades. I will show all the grade levels. So that's again, pass, merit and distinction. But I will be working towards a distinction. So for example, to get a pass grade, you need to do all the ones that say P. So P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, P6. That's how you get a pass. You have to do every single thing for assignments A and assignment B and assignment C. Now merit, the way this works, you have to do all the P's again, P1, P2, P3, all the way up to P6 in most cases. And you have to do the merits as well. So merit one, merit two, all the way up to wherever it stops. You have to do all the P's and all the M's. But just like before, you have to do it for assignment A, assignment B, and assignment C. Now to get to a distinction, it's a bit more again. All the P's, all the M's, and all the D's. So distinction one, two, three, four, five. And again, you have to do that for every single assignment. So all the P's, M's, and D's for assignments A, B, and C. So essentially do every single thing on the checklist and you can work your way up to a distinction. This is the scenario here. I'm not going to read all of this, but you have recently started working as an IT technician and it gives you the thing that you're going to be doing. So this is for part A. For part B, just feel free to pause the video and have a look at this. Again, it's the same 
scenario for the first half, but they actually want you to design and develop something for assignments B and C. So a quick note, this is way past part A, but I wanted to give you guys an introduction to this anyway. There is another playlist on the channel called Raspberry Pi Pico, um, and there's also Python tutorials. So I would recommend looking at both of those as well. But I'm going to be using the Raspberry Pi Pico W. There are two versions of the Raspberry Pi Pico. There's Raspberry Pi Pico and there's a Pico W. The W simply means Wi-Fi. And in this case, it comes with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. You can look at all the specs here. I'm going to put the link in the description again. So you guys can go to the website and look at all these numbers, all these specs. But essentially, this is a very cheap device. It costs less than £10. I found some on eBay for £7, £8, £9. I'm putting two links in the description. Both of them are from Amazon because I know most people trust Amazon. One item cost, I believe, £8.99 on Amazon. That's without the pins attached to it. So the pins have not been soldered to it. And then another one costs £12.99 from Amazon again with the pins attached. So as I mentioned, this means Wi-Fi and Bluetooth is built in. And again, this device is roughly about £10. Before this, I always recommended people use a tiny PC or a PC in general or use their normal Raspberry Pi. But the normal Raspberry Pi, which has of which is essentially a desktop, is the size of a bank card, but it's a fully fledged computer that costs about one hundred and twenty pounds now, which is probably not sustainable for most schools to buy every student one. Whereas a Raspberry Pi Pico W, most of you guys can go buy one yourselves or the school can buy them. They get them at a discount if they buy enough. And every single components that work with the Arduino, the Arduino kits, they work with the Raspberry Pi Pico just the same. You can program in C or you can program in Python. The choice is yours. Uh, Python, it could be MicroPython or it could be something called CircuitPython. So C-I-R-C-U-I-T, CircuitPython. One of the reasons I chose this was because of the Python interaction. Um, many people, I, many students I find, they find it a bit tricky to learn or understand the concepts of programming with C because Python is so very, very close to human readable English. It's much easier to get into. And once you understand the syntax and just again, how programs are built up, the constructs of programming, then you can then relate that to any language, C, Python, Java. It doesn't really matter. It's the same thing, just expanded to a different language. The Arduino Uno, which is another device that many people might use for this is a perfectly fine device, but these cost around, I would say last time I checked was around 14, 15 pounds. They do not have Wi-Fi. They do not have internet or network connectivity, which means that that 14 pounds is just for the base device. And then you still have to go and buy a hat or an attachment board or a daughter board is called to attach to the Arduino to give it network access. Not the best thing in the world, in my opinion. So that's why I've gone for the Raspberry Pi. It just has every single thing you need. And for £10, let's say you have a class of, I don't know, 30 kids. For a school, 30 times 10, £300, that's not breaking the bank. That's perfectly acceptable. Plus the Arduino Uno comes in at 16 megahertz and it has a single core processor. This is very, very, very fast for what we need to do. Don't get me wrong. But for £10, and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in, you get the Raspberry Pi Pico, which has 133 megahertz. So almost what, eight to nine times faster than what this is. And this dual core, we most likely won't ever make use of the dual core for this unit, for this course, but this device is super fast. It's very, very tiny. I think it's actually half the size of the Arduino as well. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully that was useful. The series is going to be starting soon. So I'm going to be going over assignment A first, P1, P2, all the P's, all the M's and all the D's for assignment A. Then once we finish that, we can start designing in assignments B and C. Thanks for watching. Good luck.